Hi, I'm Mrs. Gochin, the Media Specialist at William Annan Middle School. In this video clip, we will talk about how to plan and track your research searching activities using the three P's, planning, purpose, and persistence. Let's start with planning. To be the most effective in your research, it's important to take some time to plan your approach. Just a few minutes of planning can save you hours of research time and give you better results, whether you're searching a database or the Internet. When doing formal research, you also want to be more organized with your searches. The Grade 8 Language Arts Research Planning Sheet you received will guide you in your planning and organization. Take a look at the first section of this sheet labeled Research Questions. This section guides you in determining your purpose for research and understanding the information you need. Let's talk about purpose. The key purpose of your research is to identify, locate information for, and answer essential or driving research questions that will help you develop and prove the points of your thesis or argument. These questions should not require yes or no answers, but be how, what, why type of questions based on the possible subtopics or points of your argument. Once you have your initial questions, you then need to identify the associated search keywords that will help you locate information to answer these questions. The letters of the word search help you remember the five steps of successful strategic searching. The first step is S, select research questions. Next is E, extract keywords and keyword combinations from these research questions. That is, identify the main words from your questions that describe the information you need. Third is A, apply keyword search strategies to these words. Then, once you have your keywords and your search strategies, you are run your searches in available resources such as databases and the Internet, and then CH, chart your searches, which allows you to track which keywords or combinations you've used and in what resources, helping to keep you organized and moving forward in your research. The Research Planning Guide, and we'll see it right here, uh, supports you in identifying your research questions, choosing your keywords and keyword search strategies, and then running and charting your searches. The first section of this research planning sheet, Research Questions, is Step 1 in Strategic Searching. The second section of the research planning sheet, Keyword Planning, is Steps 2 and 3 of Strategic Searching, Extracting Keywords and Applying Specific Keyword Search Strategies. Let's take a look at this completed research planning guide to see how this all works. In this example, the general topic is school start times should be later. I want to prove that school start times should be later because that would be better for teens who need more sleep than they are currently getting. So step one is to identify my research questions. As you can see, there is room for three questions on the sheet. There is no magic number of research questions, but it is good to have at least one question for each subtopic or point of your argument or thesis. My draft thesis statement for this research is, schools should start later because it would better match with teen sleep cycles, improve teen academics, and benefit their overall health. And here you see the essential research questions I've developed based on that thesis. Number one, what are the sleep cycles for teens? Number two, what research has been done on the health effects of lack of sleep on teens? And number three, would later school start times improve teen academics? See how they match up with the points of my thesis statement. By finding the answers to these questions, I can collect facts and evidence to support my argument. You can pause the video now and work on the research questions or continue watching the video 
and then complete the entire planning sheet at the end. Let's move on to step two, extracting keywords. To extract keywords, you need to look at each research question and then identify the important words that describe the information you need to find to answer that question. You should circle or underline the important words. See the words that I've underlined for my questions. Sleep cycles, teens. Research, health effects, sleep, teens. Later school start times, teen academics. Once you've underlined or circled them, you would come down to Section 2, Keyword Planning, and transfer these words from the numbered line above to the same numbered line here. So you'll see for Question 1, Sleep Cycles Teens, I've written Teen Sleep Cycles, those three keywords on line 1. And similarly for Question 2, the circled or underlined keywords I've written here on line 2, and for question 3, the circled or underlined words I've written right here. And in this case, I actually have two sets of words. You may find that you circle so many words that you need to break them up a little bit. You can pause the video here, work on identifying the keywords, or continue watching and complete the entire planning sheet at the end. Now we'll move on to step three, apply keyword search strategies. So we will apply some strategies to our chosen keywords. The main strategies are, and let's take a look at that over here. Okay, so the main keyword strategies are, Use multiple specific keywords with no little words like a, uh, and, the, of, and these specific keywords should describe the information you're looking for. For instance, internet, internet safety instead of safety on the internet. The second strategy is try using synonyms. So for instance, a teen searching for the uh, topic rare cats might replace rare with the word exotic as a synonym, or replace feline for the word cats, another synonym. The third keyword strategy is to use quotation marks around well-known phrases. So for instance, if you were searching for the president's residence, you would search White House in quotes rather than the individual words White House. The last strategy uh, which is used occasionally, not often, is to use a minus sign before a word to show you don't want it included. For instance, if I was researching dolphins, the mammal, I would not want to get returned a lot of information about the football team, the Miami Dolphins, so I might enter dolphins and then dash football, saying give me back information about dolphins but not anything about a football team. Okay, let's go back to my example research sheet and let's see what I did here. In my example, I filled in this section by analyzing these descriptive words that I had written and applying the strategies. Notice that I identified as synonyms the words teenagers or students as synonyms for teens. I also identified a well-known phrase, sleep cycle, because that is something that is well known. If I say that term, that phrase, people know what I'm talking about. For the second question, I identified the synonym impact for effects and the word studies for research but I did not find any well-known phrase. And then for the third question, I used the word, I found the synonym grades for academics, and for school start times, maybe hours could be a synonym. 
Now think about the keywords you have written on lines 1 through 3 in your research or in the keyword planning section. And then below each line, apply these search strategies by writing any synonyms or well-known phrases you identify for your keywords. I also want to note this box right here. It's giving you some additional keywords that might be useful because you are doing a pro-con argument. So if you are for an issue, these keywords, positive impact, positive effect, or benefits might be useful to also add. If you're against an issue, try adding keywords like negative impact, negative effect, or issues to the keywords above. Adding keywords like data, statistics, information, or facts to your keywords can also help narrow down your searches to specific evidence for your argument. So in addition to identifying synonyms and well-known phrases, circle a couple of the keywords listed here that you might want to also use in your searching. You may pause the video here and now complete the front side of this planning sheet or wait until the end of the video. The final two steps that make up our strategic searching process is run your searches and chart your searches. If you turn to the back side of the research planning sheet, you'll see that this is where you can chart your searches as you run them to keep track of what keywords or keyword combinations you have tried and in what resources. As you can see in my example, I searched the database research in context and these are the keywords I used to search, teen sleep cycles. And then I collected some articles from those ser that search and saved them. I again continued searching in that database. This time I used other keywords, later school start times. And if I found some useful articles in that search, I saved them. And so on. I might have searched some more in research in context. But I want to show you another example. Here I've moved on to another database, Opposing Viewpoints in Context. I used the same keywords as I did in Research in Context, but in this database I know it contains some statistics, so I added the word statistics to my keywords. That was one of the keywords I had circled above here in this chart as useful keywords to add on. So you would continue like this, searching and charting your searches as you go. While charting can take additional time, it is extremely helpful for you in keeping track of where you've searched and with what keywords, so you don't duplicate your work. And it may also help you identify the most useful keywords for finding the information you need. Give it a try during this research project and see if it helps you to be more efficient and organized in your searching. Practicing these skills will help you research more effectively on your own in high school. The final P is persistence. There are going to be times during your research where you may feel confused or frustrated. This is normal and expected. Using these planning techniques can help minimize your frustration, but you must be persistent. Don't give up and make sure the information you are finding will actually help you achieve your purpose, which is to answer your research questions and support and prove your argument. Now try completing the front side of this research planning guide to prepare for your online searching. Good luck, and remember that I'm also available at lunch to help you with any problems you are having with your research.